Hi, Alex here, and welcome to the Storytelling with Data channel. Now, if you're new here, we offer content on data visualization, presentation, and storytelling. Today's video is a clip from a recorded event in which myself and fellow data storyteller Amy offer a behind the scenes look at how we use PowerPoint exclusively to build our data driven presentations. Now, in this full event, we not only share a sample data viz presentation, but we also share our thoughts on slide design as well as a more in depth tutorial within PowerPoint. So if you're interested in all of that content, I'm going to recommend that you check out our premium community site for that full hour long recording. I've actually linked the community site down below. Now, more specifically, if you're interested in the sample presentation, I'm going to ask you to comment down below with the phrase share more data viz examples and makeovers just to let us know. Now, today's clip is exclusively on slide design. And I share thoughts on how you can go from a low tech storyboard made of just post-its to a full fledged PowerPoint presentation. I hope you enjoy. My number one tip when it comes to designing effective and clear slides is going to sound a little bit silly here, but it is don't start with PowerPoint. PowerPoint is just a tool, which means that if you want to wield that tool well, you have to put some thought into how you are going to use it. So my recommendation is to plan content out before you even open this application. And this is a tip that was actually echoed by another premium member. When we solicited for tips and tricks in PowerPoint, Jen Rast commented early on and said her number one tip is to storyboard out your presentation. And I love this because it forces you to really plan out your content. Think of the sections you're going to include before you actually get to the tool. So let's take a look at the low tech planning that went into that story that you just saw previously. It's going to look like this. So you'll see sort of my messy handwriting on the screen here, but this is the actual storyboard that I built for that. Now, I personally like to plan out my content on my iPad, so I'm using the Post-it app here, but you could easily use paper, pens, whiteboards, right? Just get a sense of what you're going to talk through. What is the point you want to make on each slide? And also get a sense of the sections that will be in your presentation. For instance, if we look at the distinct sections in this story, there's a clear beginning, there's a middle where I wove through the data, and then there's a clear ending where I concluded that story prompted my audience to then use this information to drive action. And the benefit of understanding these sections up front is that you can easily map them to a distinct slide design once you get into your tool. For instance, if we think about the beginning of how I started that story, literally took that post-it and mapped it directly to a slide. And when you're thinking about designing these sort of introductory slides, I recommend going for some sort of design that's simple yet bold. And you want to think about doing that for a couple of reasons. I want to keep it simple because this is your audience's introduction into your PowerPoint presentation. So you don't want to overwhelm them with a busy design. But also this typically is where you'll share some background information. And so rather than your audience being distracted by a busy design, you want the focus to really be on you and what it is you are saying. Also recommend going bold. And what I mean by bold is having some sort of full background color, if you will, something that's eye catching. And that way you make sure your audience is paying attention right from the very start. So once we've laid the groundwork in our beginning, then we want to switch to a different design uh, layout. And we recommend doing that just because as you switch through different layouts, it prompts your audience to pay attention, right? They recognize the story is changing. They need to tune back in. And so you can see for the given story that I shared with you, we just took every single data post-it that I have here and ultimately mapped it to a distinct slide. If we look at the design of these slides, they're quite bare, lots of white space here. And that's intentional because when I'm communicating with data, I want that focal point to be my graph. So I want a ton of space where I can make that graph larger, easily legible for my audience. You may also notice that I'm gonna take that graph and I've moved it to the left-hand side of my slide which is actually not the default setting in PowerPoint. Typically when you add an object into PowerPoint, it'll center align it. But we like to move it to the left for a couple of reasons. 
creates nice clean lines. So it aligns with the slide title, or you can imagine if I had footnotes in my slide, right? They'd all start at the same point. But also many of us are presenting virtually these days, which means that when we present virtually, our audience is forced to either decide to pay attention to what we're screen sharing or pay attention to our video. So as you saw, when I went through that presentation, I did a technique where I layered my video into the slide itself. And so when you make it a habit to build your content to the left-hand side, just makes it a little bit easier than to layer in that video. It can be engaging for your audience. That's a sense of how we structured these sort of middle data-driven slides. When we got to the ending here, we again switched the design layout to prompt our audience to recognize that things are changing. We're coming to the conclusion. And I just leveraged a very simple layout, right? Modeling what we started with with our story. So this sort of single gray slide with a single statement on it. And my recommendation is to always build in some sort of conclusion into your presentation. It reminds you that you need to close out your thoughts, let your audience know that you're coming to the end, but also reminds you to prompt your audience to do something, right? Think about how they can use that information to then drive action. So hopefully you have a sense of how we structured and designed the actual presentation slides, but we also built summary slides. And my advice is that if you have to build a handout and presentation slides, build them in the same software. There's no need to jump to another tool, which is why we leveraged PowerPoint as well to build that summary handout. And when you're building a single slide with a lot of information, it's really easy to overwhelm your audience. So you wanna think about making things easy, scannable, creating clear sections, again, just like you would with your presentation. So if we refer back to that summary slide that we saw earlier, you can see the clear sections that are here. On the left-hand side, that first section, we talk about the overview, how sales have performed over time, but then we can get a little bit more granular, dive deeper into how the quarterly performance was against uh, those sales targets. And this is actually a layout that you can build directly into PowerPoint just to make it easier. Remind yourself that you want those clear sections. So this is just a high level overview of the design component of PowerPoint. We're actually going to move into PowerPoint next where you'll get a sense of how we actually built these, the different formatting tools that we made use of. But before we jump into PowerPoint, I just wanna leave you all with this important thought. I mentioned this earlier, but PowerPoint is just a tool. It's not good, it's not bad, it's not magical or evil. It is just a tool. And so if you wanna be successful with this tool, you need to put the thought in ahead of time. You need to plan out your content, think about the flow, the sections. And then once you've done that, then you can really focus on implementing and making that story come to life once you open your tool. Mm -hmm.